Work Programme The Work Programme WP was a UK government welfare to work programme introduced in Great Britain in June 2011. It was the flagship welfare to work scheme of the 2010 2015 UK coalition government. Under the work program, the task of getting the long term unemployed into work was outsourced to a range of public sector, private sector, and third sector organizations. The scheme replaced a range of schemes which existed under previous new labor governments, including employment zones, New Deal, Flexible New Deal and the now abolished Future Jobs Fund scheme which aimed to tackle youth unemployment. Despite being the flagship welfare to work scheme of the Conservative-led coalition government and then the incumbent Conservative government from May 2015, the DWP announced in November 2015 that it was replacing the work program and work choice with a new work and health program. The DWP also announced that it would not be renewing mandatory work activity and help to work, which included community work placements. CWP staff were notified that, as of February 2017, new referrals to the work program are discontinued. It was officially stopped on 1 April 2017. Participation Individuals could be mandated to take part in the work program if they were in receipt of job seekers allowance or employment support allowance. After three months, if not in education, employment or training. After nine months, if aged 18 to 24. After 12 months, if 25 or over. Subcontractors as is tractors. Below is a list of providers under the work program for each area of Britain. Note that these primes could subcontract some cases to other providers. Scotland, Working Links and Injews, Merseyside, Halton, Cumbria and Lancashire, Affur and Injews, North, West and Greater Manchester, Cheshire and Warrington, Avante, G4, Essencetic, Absetic, 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 Coventry, Warwickshire, Staffordshire and the Marches, Employment and Skills Group and Circle, O. Birmingham, Solihull and the Black Country, EOS Pertemps People Development Groups and Newcastle College, Wales, Working Links and Rehab Job Fit, Gloucestershire, Wiltshire and West of England, Rehab Job Fit, Prospect Training Services and Learn Direct, Devon, Cornwall, Somerset and Dorset, Prospect Services and Working Links, King Links, North East Avanto and in Jews. North East Yorkshire and Humber, in Trining, City Works, G4, Essen Newcastle College, West Yorkshire, Best Now Interserve Working Futures Limited, part of Interserve and in Jews, South Yorkshire, a fur and circle, East Midlands, a fur and in Jews, East of England, in Jews and CTEC and CTEC, West London, in Jews, Reed and Maximus, East London, a fur careers development group in CTEC. Surrey, Sussex and Kent, Avanti and G4SS, Thames Valley, Hampshire and Isle of Wight, Affur and Maximus. Criticism, Opposition to Workfare. Some criticisms of the work program reflect a more explicitly political objection to what these critics view as workfare. John Downey of the Scottish Council for Voluntary Services argues that workfare is effectively a handout to business whereby taxpayers are subsidizing the wage bill of the private sector. Downey also argues that the work program exploited unemployed people. The anti-workfare group Boycott Workfare makes similar arguments stating that workfare replaces jobs and undermines wages. Allegations of Conflict of Interest the Guardian has reported that several high-profile donors to the Conservative Party have made money from workfare contracts. Sovereign Capital, a venture capital firm set up by John Nash, subsequently Lord Nash, Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Schools 2013-2017, and Ryan Robinson owned Employment and Skills Group, ESG, was awarded a £73 million workfare contract. Failures to create a viable market. In November 2013, Deloitte sold its 50% stake in the work program contractor in Jews. Critics argue that this shows the government had failed to create a viable market in the welfare to work industry. 
Alastair Grimes from the consultancy Rocket Science stated, I'm not aware of people who are making money out of the work program. However, Employment Minister Esther McVeigh argued that the sale shows the success of the work program, with Deloitte exiting when their business was performing well. Debate over effectiveness A 2012 report found that only 18,270 people out of 785,000 people enrolled on the work program had held down employment for six months or more a success rate of 2.3%. Given that 5% of the long-term unemployed would be expected to find employment if left to their own devices, the work program can be considered less successful than doing nothing at all. However, Employment Minister Mark Hoban argued that as the work program supports people for two years or more, the Department for Work and Pensions had set a target of 11.9%. The chairman of the PAC, Margaret Hodge, described the performance of the work program as extremely poor. In May 2013, the House of Commons Work and Pensions Select Committee published a report critical of the work program, which described the performance of work program contractors as variable in quality. The report also stated that specialist services dealing with problems such as drug dependency and homelessness were underused, and that specialist subcontractors received a raw deal. In September 2013, AFERI had its number of referrals cut for poor performance. Lack of funding. A further analysis by the Public Accounts Committee found that the service that the work program could offer was negatively affected by a lack of funding, and that in some instances there was not enough money to provide interpreters to those with poor. And poor. And the report suggested that the level of support that the work program could offer was reduced by the sheer number of people requiring help. The report stated, Particular issues reported as resulting from a lack of funding included an inability to pay for interpreters and for participant transport in rural areas. Some subcontractors felt this also affected their ability to meet the needs of particular groups of participants. Impact on Charity Sector the work program was blamed for the closure of some charities who criticized the way in which WP contracts were structured. Drafting of legislation The workfare element of the work program was ruled ultra buyers in a 2013 Court of Appeal judgment which stated that the job seekers allowance employment, skills and enterprise scheme regulations 2011 did not describe the employment schemes to which they apply as is required by the primary legislation. The Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, Ian Duncan Smith, responded to the Court of Appeal judgment by announcing emergency legislation in order to correct this. He also appeared to attack the utility of geology as a profession when attacking unemployed geology graduate Kate Riley, who had challenged the workfare scheme. His remarks were criticized by the Geological Society of London. Payment by results It has been argued that payment by results whereby companies only get paid for finding people work meant that they focused on the easiest cases among the long-term unemployed with the most difficult effectively sidelined. The term creaming and parking has been used to describe this process. The Department for Work and Pensions denied that parking was an issue. A study by the Third Sector Research Center at Birmingham University found widespread gaming of the work program by private sector providers. They argue that because providers were not paid until an unemployed person had been in work for two years, it made little economic sense to concentrate on the most difficult cases. The study also found that the largest private sector providers known as primes were guilty of passing more difficult cases onto subcontractors. Furthermore, parking meant that charities were not getting referrals under the work program as such customers were not considered likely to result in a payment for the provider. One interviewee told the study, It's not being PC, but I'll just say it as it is. You tend to get left with the rubbish, people who aren't going to get a job. If the prime thought they could get them a job, they wouldn't refer them to someone else to get a job. Former CEO of Induce Richard Johnson Writing in The Guardian argued that the tendering process for work program contracts meant that those companies that submitted the cheapest tenders were successful, something that encouraged parking and creaming. 
those driven to submit the cheapest tenders did not have any other business outside of welfare to work, and either secured work program contracts or closed. Discounts on the base price of over 30% were offered by some bidders, but with the discounts kicking in during the later years of the contract when the financial viability of the contracts could be at risk.